Hello everyone, this is Sarpik and welcome to the 7th episode in Linux Privilege Escalation series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can escalate your privileges through the help of cron jobs. So without getting any delay, let's dive into the video. Guys, first of all, really, really thank you for all your support. If you want to connect to me personally, you can check out my Twitter and the LinkedIn. The links are in the description below. And if you want to be part of my community, you can check out my Discord server. The link is in the description below. And guys, in the previous episodes, we discussed about uh, how you can escalate your privileges through the help of sudo, suid, capabilities. And we also discussed how to enumerate this stuff as well. So in this video, we'll be discussing about cron jobs. So so cron jobs are like uh, it's a feature in linux guys like what you can do is like you can try to uh, run some kind of uh, an application like it's kind of a binary like nmap or anything like that or even you can write your own scripts okay like you can create your own script to take backup or anything like that okay so like you can uh, schedule those scripts or applications to run at a particular point of time like it's kind of scheduling okay so like if you write a script to take backup of whole your uh, of your whole system at uh, some point of time like uh, like every morning or every monday or anything like that so it is uh, this cron jobs feature is going to run that particular uh, uh, binary or application whatever you whatever you intended to write and it is going to do the intended task so that is what this cron jobs is meant to and if you want to know more about this cron jobs you can uh, check out the resource from the description below where you can learn more about cron jobs okay but here uh, what's the benefit here is like by default this cron jobs can be run uh, can run as uh, will run as some kind of owner privileges like uh, here in the linux it is root so uh, how you can do that uh, it's very simple so all this cron job configurations like it's a kind of config file is stored in something called as cron tab so you can simply view that okay so let me go back uh, to my machine so this is my compromised machine so i got shell here so you can see it's karen so if i do a simple cat and etc and cron tab you can see some information here guys like you can see some uh, basic information like path shell etc like that and also you can see some example guys so this is uh, like a, a kind of how the job definition is done so this the first uh, the first option is for minute like for every minute like if you write for like uh, one like it uh, for every one minute of an hour it will run or like these are like kind of configurations you can write okay at which hour you want to run uh, at which date of uh, month you want to run or what is the weekday or anything like that okay so that is it like if you want to know more about it on how to configure this and everything like that i leave the link uh, one of for the one of the best resources regarding cron job uh, cron jobs you can check that out from there and here you can see guys there is star here so star in the regex kind like it works every time okay it works every time like there is no particular point of time to work for okay it works for every time okay and we got some files here like antivirus.sh uh, which is in uh, slash directory and you can see this is the uh, username like what is the privilege like at, as what user this particular uh, binary or application runs and you have some antivirus files and you have something called as backup.sh so which is available in the home uh, karen itself if you look into the present working directory we are in this particular directory only if i do an ls uh you can see there is a backup.sh so first of all i'll try with this thing like i'll try to modify this thing and let's see what i can do so let me use vim editor guys here uh let me do clear first of all so vim editor let me do a quick enlarge so vim uh, vi so it's a kind of editor like nano or sublime text or anything like that okay and mention the file name So you can see there is a script here like you can see it is taking it is downloading like it is making some kind of zip file here like it is unnecessary for us okay so if you hit i so where you can insert this stuff so you can delete all this part uh, you can leave that shebang so this is called uh, the upper part is called a shebang so we are telling the linux to uh, use which kind of uh, like here if it is mentioned as bash so it is going to use bash so that's a different topic for now and let's uh, have a kind of reverse shell so this is a reverse shell for bash so it is simple guys here like uh, you can see dev slash tcp and this is the ip address 
so the ip address here in this case is the ip address of my uh, device which after connecting to this uh, track me uh, connection and also what port you want to work on okay and this part so let me copy this thing okay and i'll leave the link for this like if you want to know let us assume that this is a bash file but you want to create payload for some different things like this particular resource called as the payload all things so i leave the link for this in the description below you can do check them out from there like it consists of a reverse shell for uh, almost all the programming languages you can try to use them according to your need okay so let me paste it here and guys this is the current ip address uh, i can show you that so if i show you the ipa so this is the ip address of tun0 uh, tun0 tunnel0 anything like that okay so let me come back uh, so in order to escape from this vim so i seen more most people getting confused here so first of all hit escape okay and uh, hit colon so you can see it is typing uh, it is getting over in the bottom and wq so it is going to exit out of there now you can check it as well okay and uh, now you can check it so if you do a cat if i simply did a, uh, do a cat you can see this is what i'm getting okay and uh, one more thing guys uh, we need to uh, open a connection as well since this script is running every time every possible time so you can get the connection okay so you might be getting like for the first time you you might be wondering like why this script is not running okay even i got that error and i found out quickly is like if i do an ls hyphen la you can see it is only read and write there is no executable writes for this so let's give the executable writes and let's wait uh, since it is running almost all the time you will be getting the shell in a no time okay uh, guys it took like a small amount of time like 10 to 20 seconds so that's the reason i paused the video and you can see i got the connection from uh, this uh, particular linux machine uh, you can see i am root here by reading this uh, console you can understand i am root and i am also going to show you and run who am i you can see i am root here so this is kind of easy thing guys okay e easy thing but uh, this challenge is not over yet so if i do a cat uh, etc and the cron tab so make sure you take note of these uh, steps or anything these file locations etc guys because it will be helpful for you in the future like or else you can use my notes uh, which i created exclusively for like this is my kind of uh, what you call a handbook kind of thing you might not find screenshots and all those fancy stuff but you might find what you need there okay so you can see you can see uh, cat at see a cron a cron tab and etc like that okay so if i do like that so you can see there is something called as temp and test.py as well like what you can do is uh, if you go to this uh, slash tmp and if i do an ls so i'm root guys currently but no need to worry like there is no test.py file here so the challenge here is like try to create a python file and uh, just leave like that give executable rights and the python file should be a reverse shell so there is going to be a lot of stuff related to python uh, in this particular uh, link or you can create your own through the help of sockets okay and uh, once you uh, do that you will be getting the shell for you uh, because you uh, because this particular thing is going to run as root so that is the challenge guys a kind of small challenge for you like if if you want to put more into this practical and stuff and that is it guys like how you can abuse this cron job feature like almost uh like uh, till now we abused lot of linux features okay so we can call it a bug these are features but uh, because they are configured wrongly we are able to abuse them okay so even you are trying to like even you're trying to do some linux administration stuff try to give the uh privileges properly only okay don't try to give it uh, uh morally okay aggressively okay and uh, so that is it that comes to the end of this video and in the next videos i'll try to cover some other part so if i go back uh, you can see there is still this path variable this is kind of easy only and this is nfs a network file sharing so these are mostly uh like less used kind of thing like uh uh, cron jobs like you can find it almost everywhere like you can try to escalate through the cron jobs and this path and nfs is also kind of good so we'll cover these two in the next upcoming videos and uh, if you really like this series as well as this video uh, make sure you like it and do share with your friends who are into this stuff 
and if you want to be part uh, of my community you can check out my discord server and that is it guys for today's video i'll meet you in the next video thank you bye